In this video, we're going to take a look at the simplification process. So in 2014, what they've actually added is a new command called simplify. So here in the assembly, I've got assembly open. And on the assemble tab, you can see right beside assemble, we've got this new simplify command um, inside of our ribbon. So when I click on the simplify, it gives us three different options. We've got include components, we've got defined envelopes, and we've got create simplified part. The include envelopes command, this essentially selectively determines which assembly component to be included in a simplified view, and we can use that information to actually create a new part model. The develop envelopes, this allows us to find an actual bounding box or a cylindrical geometry to represent an assembly components and use that information to create an actual uh, part model. And the last option is creating an actual simplified part. This essentially combines the use of the simplified view, envelopes, and the visibility settings to create a new simplified model. So here when I click on include components, this brings up an actual mini tool tab right over here. And we have some options in here. So here we've got our view options. So we can view all, we can view included, and view excluded. So right now we'll go ahead and leave it as view all. So what this allows me to do is actually create an actual view based on components that I select. So here inside this blower assembly, if I click on the fan, and I'll click on the smell blower, or even if I expand the actual sub-assemblies here, I can actually pick on a component over here. So just say if I wanted to pick on this outer band, I can select the band from here, and I'll actually select it. Some other options that you have, if you click on the pull down, you've got your part priority. You can select component priority and select parent priority. Over here to the right, if we had more than one occurrences, this option, if we check it, will automatically select all the occurrences. So once you're done, you can simply click on the check mark. So you can see what happened here inside of the actual model browser. If we go over to our representations, it actually created a new simple view, one directly right below our master view right here. So here if I double click on master, you can see everything shows. And then if I go back into my simple view, it just shows those basic components that we selected. So you can see everything else is actually turns off the actual visibility of those components. Now if we wanted to bring in other components and actually include them inside the simplified view, all we have to do is right click on simple view and click on edit included components. So when I click on edit included components, it brings me back to that same dialog box. So you can see I've got the same mini tool tab here, and now we've got view all, and I can click on view included, and then I can click on view excluded. So this kind of gives me a nice view of what is not included inside that simple, simplified view. So if I wanted to bring in other components, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this option on so it'll select all the occurrences. So if I select this component, notice both of them, since it was just one component, I didn't have to select both. It automatically selected both of them for me. I'll go ahead and pick this member, and we'll pick this member right here. So I just wanted to pick the actual overall frame. So once I'm done, I'll go ahead and click on the check mark, and you can see it brings into the actual view right here. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of bring in um, the other two members in the back, and we'll go ahead and include those as well. So again, I can simply right click, and I can click on Edit Include Components, and it brings me back, and I can see what's excluded, and I'll go ahead and bring in these members. So this member, this one, and we'll click on that one right there, and we'll bring the overall frame, and we'll click on the check. So you can see here, it kind of gives us an over, overview of the actual outline and what comprises of the actual uh, blower assembly here. If I wanted to, again, get rid of any of the views, I can simply right click and I can click on edit included components and I can click on view what was included and if I simply click on those components again I can simply get rid of them. So now when I click OK I'm back to my basic view right here. So I just want to actually show just the overall frame extents right here. So I want to actually create a bounding box for this actual um, the fan profile right here and for the motor and for this component right here. So we're going to take a look at defined envelopes next. So now that we have our simple view created, what we're going to do is actually create an actual div, um, an envelope. So we're going to actually create bounding boxes for our actual components. So here when I go into my simplify panel, I'll click on the define envelopes. And this brings up another mini tool tab. 
And I just kind of like to drag it up into the upper right hand corner, right over in here. And our first option that we've got, we've got the two different options. So we can click on bounding box or we can click on bounding cylinder. So there's two different shapes that you can actually create. So here for the motor, what I'm going to do is click on bounding cylinder and I'm just going to select this object right here. So you can see it kind of gives me the overall, um, the overall diameter. So you can see it's including the component onto the right. So you can see it actually goes above and beyond right in here. So I'll go ahead and click the check mark right here. And it'll go ahead and actually create an actual bounding box for me, just like that. And for this component right here, for the actual blower, I'll do the same thing. I'll go to define components. And this time, I'll do a bounding box. And we'll go and select this box right here. And you can see it kind of looks at the actual extents of the frame and it kind of gives me an overall size. So here instead of clicking on OK, I'll go ahead and hit apply. And I'll keep this window open. So you can see it creates the actual bounding box. Move that over to the right. And we'll finish off another bounding box for the actual um, the guard profile right here. So I'll go ahead and click on box again and we'll select this component and you can see it kind of gives me an overall width. So here if we scroll down the only thing over here there's no 2 so you can't say I want to extrude this 2 to the bottom face so you kind of have to guess where you can measure it out and we can click OK. So once I hit apply it goes in and actually creates a bounding box. So these two options right here, you've got Show Original and you've got Hide Original. So when I click on Show Original, I'll be able to actually show the original component here. If I turn on Hide Original, it'll actually hide the actual component there. So once you're done, you can click on the X, and now you have kind of have your bounding profiles right in here, and you've got a simplified component. So now what I can do is I can go back in, and since I've got my overall length of the actual uh, the fan cover right here, I can go ahead and get rid of these angle profiles at the bottom. So if I go back and edit my simple view, I can edit my included components. Over here I'm going to click on view included and I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of these components here. And this bottom profile, and we'll go ahead and click OK. So you can see right here I've got a simplified component. So again it has the same the length and the width of the original assembly, but just say I was just using this as a placeholder within the actual assembly. The next option that we have is we can actually take this component and actually create a simplified part out of it. So when I click on Create Simplified Part, it brings up the Create Simplified Part dialog box. So this is where it can specify a new part name. So you've got three different combined options. You've got the single body with seams between planar faces. We'll actually merge them together. Or you can do the single body with the seams between planar faces maintained or you can maintain each solid as a separate body. So for this example we're just going to go ahead and combine everything um, and we're actually going to um, you know, do a single body with the seams between uh, the planar faces. So I'll go ahead and call this one Blower and if you wanted to change the template you can specify the template here no problem and then go ahead and click OK. So what this does is it actually creates an actual simplified component. So now you might think that you know you can do the same process between the shrink wrap and your um, your drive components, but what this simplification process is really is going to be used for is for the whole BIM exchange. So you can see here once I clicked on create a simplified component, it brings me into check Revit features. It says recognize Revit features and then the BIM exchange. So essentially, what this is going to be used for is to actually bring this component into to actually be used inside of Revit. So here we can actually check for Revit features. So we can look for specific components in here. So it's just going to load up the dialog box and it's going to look for any Revit features. And essentially all the features have passed with a uh, successful check. And then we can actually recognize any Revit features. So we want to keep the features recognized by Revit. They'll be hidden from the recognizing additional Revit features. So that's an option you want to keep turned on. So I'll go and click OK to that to see if it found any other features. So now when I go into the BIM exchange, this is where I can actually add specific components. So inside this blower assembly, right, 
as a manufacturer, we're, we actually need to know all the detailed information on how, you know, how it was built, you know, how many brackets we're going to be using, you know, how big the actual fan motor, you know, size and everything like that, because we have to actually create their drawings. But inside of an actual Revit drawing, um, you know, inside of a building, all we need to do this to create this is actual placeholder. You know, we might need connections ins and out, so that's why we can actually create electrical connectors in here. So we can specify the different system types, anything like that. You know, if this com component had any pipes, we can actually specify the system types in here as well. So the benefit of this is, once I bring this into Revit, I can actually modify, manipulate the actual data information in here. So if I've got, you know, pressure or anything like that, or force on the actual pipe, so if I go into, a you know, hydronic return, all this information here, we can actually change directly inside of Revit. So this is new for 2014. So again, you have the whole simplification process, but this is kind of mostly used for the Revit side. Um, but within the actual assembly environment, you can take use of the simple view right here. I mean, creating the actual simple view, it's a nice easy way of actually creating a new view representations. So you do have the benefits directly inside of just a regular inventor assembly as well. Thanks for watching.